given the chronic shortage of GPUs at late, it could be said that saving your money and holding on to your existing graphics card just a little while longer is like tightening your belt when food is short. However, if the GPU in your system is this anemic, a better analogy might be eating out of the trash rather than starve. This, folks, is an NVIDIA GT705 I picked up late last year for £12. That's about $15. Despite its name, it has virtually nothing in common with the GT710. <laughs> Man, I, I wish it was a 710. No, this is a rehashed Fermi display adapter released to OEMs in 2014, but would scarcely have passed as a graphics card even then. If all you've got is this in your system, is there anything you can get a playable experience on that was released in the last couple of years? Despite my own misgivings, I guess I'm willing to give it a try. And we're not off to a brilliant start here. Fortnite added performance mode last year specifically to make the game more friendly to low-spec PCs. The GT705 returned an average frame rate of 21, with a 1% low of 10, in performance mode. On the positive side, that's better than an iPhone. Checkmate, Apple. Yeah. Guess I shouldn't have expected much. Running Rocket League in 720 at minimum settings returned just shy of 15 FPS, with lows of 5. I can't tell you how painful a gaming experience this is. Oh, not Valorant. My sweet Valorant. Look at what they did to my baby boy. Okay, maybe I'm maybe I'm exaggerating a bit. Running again at 720 low settings saw an average of 37 and 1% lows of 20. I guess it just felt worse as due to the card's single HDMI and my lack of adapters, I had to play the game through the capture PC, which adds just enough lag to make the game utterly unplayable. Looking at some of the hoops Crisp had to go through on his channel to get a playable frame rate out of Valheim on the GT710, I could tell early on that I wasn't going to get anywhere with the 705. As you can see, we had a marvellous frame of low quality 720 goodness delivered every second, which makes for a remarkably fast and hard to follow PowerPoint, but it's a bit slow for a game. I'm too cheap to buy Overwatch, so whenever I feel the need to test a squad shooter on a low-spec PC, I usually go for either Team Fortress 2 or Paladins, and today I was in a pally mood. With settings down to, oh my god, what is wrong with their eyes? At 1280x720, I saw a passable frame rate averaging 32 with lows of 22. I had higher hopes for PUBG Lite. Like Fortnite Performance Mode, this is essentially using the optimizations developed for the game's mobile port and bringing it to Windows for owners of low-spec PCs and laptops, so the 27 FPS average and 17 FPS lows were disappointing. Also, playing Deathmatch against seasoned PUBG Lite players on a capture PC will make you question your decisions in life. So, who wants some good news? Well, I needed a win, and Game of the Year 2020 delivered. I haven't actually played the game before, though I enjoyed Transistor and Bastion before it, and look forward to giving it more attention in the future, but Hades performed well enough. At 1280x720, the average FPS was 21, and lows were 11, but the animation style hides that pretty well. 
It's not a great experience, but it looks amazing and at least it plays better than Valheim. I kind of want to give Genshin Impact a chance, as despite the incredibly annoying voice acting and mind-numbing amount of exposition in the opening minutes, it's a pretty game that doesn't hide its Breath of the Wild influences. Sadly, in order to get a measly 13 FPS average and 7 FPS 1% low, I had to turn the quality settings down low enough that the game looks like absolute ass. Well, that's about all I can stomach right now. Warzone didn't start, neither did Cyberpunk, Horizon Zero Dawn, or Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but on reflection, that was probably for the best. Should you buy one of these cars if you found one for a good price? No. You can get better performance out of integrated graphics on any Intel from the last few years, and AMD APUs would make you cry tears of genuine joy after playing with this thing. If you can get a GT 710 or 730, even if you have to save up for a bit longer to get one, you definitely should, at least if this is the alternative. As for me, I'm not done with this card yet. This video feels like a defeat, and I won't let the GT705 beat me. I'm going to come back soon, and I'm going to find some games that will play well enough that I don't want to give up gaming afterwards, even if I have to scour my Steam library to do so. Hope you enjoyed watching me suffer, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.